Hello, I'm Amy Blaylock. Welcome to City Hall this week. The city's plan to design a better bus service in Durham now has the green light to start making some much needed improvements. The plan, which is geared toward improving the experience for current customers and attracting new ones, was approved by the City Council on June 18th. It centers around four goals, which were developed after receiving extensive public feedback on areas that needed to be improved. The first goal is to create an environment that is safe and feels safe to customers and employees. Well, one of the problems that we've experienced, and this is actually a, a, probably a good problem to have, is overcrowding on some of the buses. So to uh, help reduce the overcrowding, we're looking to provide more frequent service on those routes that have a high demand and uh, actually looking at improving the area around some of our bus stops as well. The second goal is to provide services that are reliable, convenient, easy to access, courteous, and friendly. The key thing for providing reliable service is ensuring that it's on time. Uh, some of the buses and the routes have grown over time and the use has increased such that many of the bus routes are having trouble meeting their schedule. So one of the things that the Designing Better Bus Service plan will do is make adjustments to the routes, uh, shorten some of the routes, streamline some of the routes so that they can actually meet their schedule. The third goal is to find a cost-effective way of meeting basic mobility and other diverse needs that should be provided to all customers in our area. The key recommendation to meet that need is matching the service frequency with the demand. Uh, as the data currently operates 30-minute service throughout the day on most of the routes, Monday through Saturday and hourly on Sunday. What we're looking to do with the Designing Better Bus Service recommendations really, is really adjust that frequency to meet the demand. Where the demand is less, we have uh, less ridership, we'll probably we'll be going from 30-minute service to hourly service. On the other hand, where we have a high demand, we'll in actually increase the service frequency from every 30 minutes to every 15 minutes. And the fourth goal is to develop services that support economic development, reduce carbon emissions, and provide residents and visitors with affordable access to their community. The key recommendation there is adjusting some of the routes to serve our major employment centers, uh, in particular the Duke Hospital, medical facilities at, in, in University, North Carolina Central, Durham Tech, and some of our, and our other uh, public schools as well. We're looking at uh, providing service to all of the high schools uh, and connecting students with, with transit. The plan is expected to be implemented within three years, with the first changes being made to the Bull City Connector in August. Durham's downtown and 9th Street areas are experiencing tremendous growth and revitalization, and the city wants to make sure the parking it provides is keeping pace. That's why $229,000 will be spent to have a comprehensive parking study conducted in those areas. Because a number of businesses rely on city parking for their livelihoods, the study will evaluate whether the amount of public parking being provided is adequate. The study will also look at how parking can be managed and operated in a more effective and customer-friendly way. If the study determines that more parking is needed, it will make recommendations on where that should be provided. Another significant water line replacement project is about to get underway in downtown. This project will take place inside the downtown loop south of Morgan Street and north of Ramsar Street. The water lines need to be replaced since a major portion of the infrastructure in this area is nearing the end of its service life. At the same time, the roads they are buried in are planned for streetscaping, resurfacing and realignment. To begin, $1.5 million will be spent to have an engineering firm determine the location of existing utilities, prepare design plans, and oversee construction. Supporting Durham's young people and unemployed workers. Find out how the city and its partners are helping to brighten the future for many when City Hall This Week continues. Weight loss, it's one of the many ways to fight osteoarthritis pain. For more information on managing pain, go to fightarthritispain.org.
traditional light bulbs actually generate nine times more heat than light. Switch to Energy Star light bulbs, and you'll realize just how much cash you are really burning through. Saving energy saves you money. Learn more at energysavers.gov. Welcome back. The city is continuing its efforts to give Durham's young people and unemployed workers a chance to succeed in the workplace. A total of $434,000 will be committed to two agencies to continue their work in support of the Youth Employed and Succeeding, or YES, program. The program focuses on Workforce Investment Act eligible youth. It helps to provide alternative secondary education, leadership development, tutoring, and study skills instruction and occupational skills training. YES also connects youth to services in the community that address barriers to employment or job skill development. An additional $190,000 will go toward providing on-the-job training subsidies for up to an additional 36 Workforce Investment Act adult or laid-off worker participants. This funding will help to offset costs for Durham's businesses to hire long-term unemployed participants, graduates of local Tech School Jobs Now programs, or to support state employees who have lost their jobs due to layoffs. Participants will also receive additional job skills training. Here's a reminder now about how the city's schedule will be affected by the upcoming 4th of July holiday. Most city offices will be closed on Wednesday, July 4th. There will be no collection of garbage, recycling, yard waste, and bulky items on the 4th. Wednesday's normal collections will take place on Thursday, July 5th, and Thursday's collections will be delayed until Friday. Friday's collections will take place on Monday, July 9th. For more information on other closings due to the holiday, visit the city's website or call Durham One Call at 919-560-1200. If you haven't taken advantage of Durham's many recreational activities, you don't want to miss out any longer. Find out why these city services rank so high in resident satisfaction and what's being done to improve them even further when City Hall This Week continues. Thanks for calling the GED Pep Talk Center. Jerry Stiller speaking. Your level seven in your face pep talk. I can keep pushing. Believe me, I'm good at it. Once you've got your GED diploma, you'll feel so good about yourself. You come. Mr. Trejo, can I transfer this guy to you? He needs something a little more... Persuasive? Whatever motivation you need, we've got a pep talk for you. Get your GED pep talk and find free classes at yourged.org. There's a place, not so far away, a place where you don't have to keep the volume down. You'll find all sorts of creatures in this place without have to. The silly you, the proud you. You may even meet the curious you. It's tickling me. You, you, you! Ask your parents to take you to this not so far away place. Come to the forest, where the other you lives. But first, stop by discovertheforest.org. Welcome back. While summer is the peak of parks and recreation activities, these city services are enjoyed by many throughout the year as well. That's why this week's What Durham is Saying focuses on the feedback offered in the 2011 Resident Satisfaction Survey on these important activities. The highest level of satisfaction was with greenways and trails. 71% said they are satisfied with this city service. Well, one reason greenways and trails are important to Durham's residents is because it's an alternative way of transportation. Many people run, walk, bike to work, to school, to uh, to the store. It's also exercise, provides exercise, uh, especially dealing with the obesity issues here in the area and also for um, recreational purposes. Some of the ways that we're ensuring that these city services are improving, DPR and planning departments are working together. We just completed our Greenway plan. We're also reviewing development and site plans together to ensure that Greenway rights of ways are being dedicated. We're also working with the Durham um, Open Space and Trail Commission to ensure that we are tracking the community needs for trails. We're working with developers to see if they're willing to incorporate part of the trails in their overall projects. And most recently, Public Works just started construction on the American Tobacco Trail from 54 South to Chatham County. 70% say they are satisfied with the city's cultural programming. 
we have all types of cultural programming. One, we have the national award-winning Bembe Festival we offer every year. We have the Latino Festival, which we moved it to September so that we can encompass the Hispanic Heritage Month, which starts September 15th to October 15th. We also are, are offering docent tours at our West Point and Eno and recognizing the historic uh, structures that we have in that park. We're also incor incorporating some new classes, basket weaving, candle making, um, and more that we're offering there. And then when Leaf Farm Heritage Park reopens in the spring, we will have a series of historical uh, cultural programs there. What we're trying to do to improve cultural offerings for the community is working with our staff at our recreation centers to incorporate the many gardens that we are uh, running there at our facilities and teaching young people how to prepare uh, foods using the old time remedies of uh, canning and preserving, preparing ethnic dishes. We have a Black History Month programs. We have Kwanzaa. We have various programs that we uh, recognize and are incorporating in the recreation center. So that's one way of, of getting more young people involved. That effort toward constant improvement also carries over to other areas of parks and recreation services. With 51% satisfied with the city's picnic shelters and 40% satisfied with the city's outdoor adventure programs, Durham now knows some of the specific areas in which improvements need to be made. One of the things we're trying to do to improve uh, resident satisfaction with our picnic shelter rentals is to coordinate between our reservationists and our park maintenance cleanup to ensure that residents will never find a dirty picnic shelter. With our outdoor adventure program satisfaction, what we're finding are the residents are satisfied with it, but we know we need to market it to get the word out. Um, we have so many different programs, the kayaking, the community um, cookouts, we have the high ropes course, adventure course, and we're working on marketing so that we can get the word out to more people. It's also important to note that 61% were satisfied with the overall condition of the city's parks, recreation centers, and facilities. A level of satisfaction that was echoed with Durham's economic development services as well. Find out where those services rank the strongest and where improvements need to be made in our next What Durham is Saying. That does it for this edition of City Hall This Week. Don't forget to like us on our new Facebook page and follow us on Twitter. Those links are listed on your screen and can also be found on the Public Affairs homepage on the city's website. And of course, you can still find us on demand on DTV8's webpage or the city's YouTube channel. I'm Amy Blaylock. Thank you for joining us.